there everybody, Bulbo10000 here, bringing you another episode of Mag Mammal 2, and today we are going to take on the final stage of Tier 3 and the boss, starting with the final stage, and taking a look at that, it is somebody's least favourite, I think that's Snowrunt Pyro, I'm not 100%. 59th, BBLIR, Forgotten Fortress, score 23.6, 1435, 14, 36, 19, Pyro's least favorite, oh boy, okay. One energy element and four noble nickels, this is a fun one actually. I actually quite like this stage, I'm not gonna lie. I, I think it's interesting what it does, I think it does a lot, and it is a very ambitious stage, but I don't think it's... Uh, a bad stage. I'd say it's gonna- it's one of the better stages uh, in the early game of the contest that I've played, from what I recall, and mainly it revolves around the aspect of many split paths. However, if you know where you're going, those split paths aren't actually going to be a problem, because there are a lot of interesting little secrets hidden in this stage that you can actually find quite simply. So first things first, we need to just get through this little sheep van, uh, sheep block segment like so. Drop on down, and we've got anti-grav- or not anti-grav, but we've got- we've got a gravity gimmick. Oh yeah, it is actually anti-gravity. Yep, it's- it's more gravity. Or less gravity, sorry. I'm, ah, less gravity. Head down here, and we're gonna find the first secret of the map. You see, this wall, you can slide through, and you find this beautiful room filled with crazy- OCs, and BL, uh, BBLIR. I don't have much to say here, so I might as well tell the credits. The stage music was composed by Dead Team, not sure by which member, but regardless. The Crash Man boss fight music is a remix by RushJet1. Basically everything else was made by me. About this fortress, this is an old fortress that's been recently taken over by Dr. Wily. The original owner is unknown, but he has scattered power-ups in certain areas to aid you. Since this fortress is so old, the high gravity has caused the walls to weaken. Be careful. That's pretty much the gist of it. And there's a lot of, all, of different sort of fan robot masters here, but none of them really need to be talked to. Instead, we need to come here, and we need to use the dual satellite on here to get a noble nickel. This is a secret area in in this stage, which uh, which we can find actually from a later point if we so wished. Instead, though. We're gonna go out here, and we're actually gonna be right by the end of the stage. This is perfect if you want a perfect run this stage. Because if you drop just down here, we're at the end of the stage. Because, there's the boss door. This stage is basically massive. There's so much to do, and I just took a shortcut that I knew about. But uh, if you're taking the normal path, then you could find yourself completely lost. Here is actually the end of the stage, but we don't actually want to come here yet. We want to grab this key. And then... One of these Wileys is real. This one, he's real. You can see him moving. Keep still, he might not notice me. Ah. If we head back this way, we're back at the start of the stage, and we can unlock this door, which leads to teleporters, because there were so many places in this stage that you need teleporters. And the reason why I am just showing you the optimal path is because this is a big stage and I don't want to take too long in it. So, hint box. There's a set of hidden rooms. One can be accessed by sliding through the left wall in the room with a single Crash Man platform. And the other one is in the Quick Man laser drop and is available via a teleporter in this room. That's the rooms that we just went to. Now, block trains and other gimmicks can be frozen with the Flash Stopper. Crash Man has been hidden in this level. He's hidden somewhere in the Quick Man laser drop. And lastly, there's a hidden Yashichi in the ceiling of the blue path before the big room teleporter is to the top right. So, some pretty interesting things to note. Alright, first things first, I say we take the blue path. I'm not 100% on remembering where to go. Actually, yeah, I think the blue path leads to a noble nickel. I'm not 100%. I know there are- I know the location of two more noble nickels, I'm just not 100% on this, and I don't- I'm trying to remember, because I don't really want to screw this one up. This is sort of a, the sort of stage where you kind of just want to know where everything is and get through it really quickly. I think there's a Noble Nickel around here somewhere. I'd like to say it's across here. I don't think it's down in the purple path. So, let's super arrow across, grab that E-Tank, and then head to the right. We don't really want to go down here. 
All right. Because I know there's one in the Crash Man boss room, which is the, the one that was hinted at in the hint box. I don't think there's one here. Okay, thank you. I don't believe there's one here, but I think there might be one at the end of one of the paths. There's one at the end of an auto-scroll path, which is uh, interesting, to say the least. There we go. Noble Nickel? There's the Noble Nickel. This was the one I couldn't remember. Brilliant, okay. In that case, we've got two more Noble Nickels to find, and we just need to go onto different paths to do that. Actually, we're actually pretty much en route to the next Noble Nickel, because the next Noble Nickel is actually on the Quick Man Laser Drop, which uh, most of the paths all lead to that drop. I'm also just doing this for a few bolts. I just want to get some so I can buy myself a costume for the next episode. Let me see how many. 116. I need a few more. I think I can afford the Proto Man costume if I wanted it. This is a pretty nice place to farm. If you're not really interested in doing the Jewel mini game, uh, the Jewel Man mini game, this is perfect for farming. Just killing some tellies, easy to kill. They go down in one hit, and they all seem to be dropping bolts. It also helps if you buy the item, uh, uh, the items in the uh, Eddie's shop that allows you to get more items for kills. Yeah, it's pretty helpful. All right, I'll do one more and then we'll head off. Or what? Get to one more big bolt. One more big bolt. Come on. Oh. Two small bolts. No big bolts. There we go. All right, I'm happy to leave now. So this is where the area, that's up there where that ladder was, is where the Ashiki is, but this area is where everything leads up, and then after this guy, we get to the Quick Man Drop. Now, we want to be very careful with this Quick Man Drop, because the way through is down to the right here. Right here, there's a hidden Quick Man fight with a weirdly proportioned Quick Man? Not Quick Man, Crash Man. Why am I saying Quick Man? Crash Man. But we don't actually need to kill him. We just need the... We just need the, uh, the Noble Nickel that he was guarding. He's not necessarily difficult, but he does have an interesting pattern in that he will just jump around at a moment's notice. But I think we can take him out. There we go. Ow! This this is gonna be close actually, I'm I'm calling it. Oh no! Oh the skull amulet saved me! Got him! There we go. Take it out, uh Crash Man. I I was saying Quick Man because of the Quick Man uh lasers. But yeah, now we just do the Quick Man drop. We've killed Crash Man and his weirdly proportioned body. Uh, poor guy. Um, still has no hands. And now we just head back down here. Yeah, we're back here. You all know where this is. We head back to the end of the level. And we just have to go back to the teleporters one more time. So let's head back on up. None of the items respawn though. We actually need to get behind that little boss door that was to the right there, but the problem is we need to go around a path to be able to get there. So, let's head back to the teleporters. And now we need to pick another path. We need to pick the purple path. And yes, we're gonna be doing some anti-gravity shenanigans. Let's go! This is why the block train hint was necessary. Because we're gonna be using block trains to get around this part of the level. Just gotta make sure that we don't mess this one up, because if we do mess it up, we end up having to go all the way back. But we're fine. Let's follow this block train down, and hopefully we'll be able to join up to the one that was... over here. Oh no! Oh well. But we do respawn here, which I guess is good. Also, I do apologize if you hear any dogs in the background. Those are my dogs downstairs. Uh, they're loud. All right, there we go. This time we actually managed to get through this block train without much problem. Slide down here. Slide back here. And then we just need to drop down here when we're ready. Like so. And I believe, yep, this is the auto-scroll segment. This is the auto-scroll segment. 
In this segment, everything is auto-scrolled, which means that, you know, we're dealing with auto-scroll shenanigans and they're fun. Everyone loves auto-scroll. And this is where this stage gets really weird, because it tries to layer a lot of different platforming elements from the engine. In fact, I would say pretty much every platforming element from the engine is used in this segment. It's all pretty simple now, we've got these lovely light switches, and if the segment had stuck with the light switch theme, I think this level might have gotten a better critique from this segment. But it gets a bit weird, because it completely abandons the light switches, and now we're just jumping on platforms that are appearing from thin air. Now we have these platforms, which drop down, but move up if we jump on them, like so. That's sort of the strategy for these platforms. Drop down, drop down. Oh no, we actually have to go down for this one. There we go. And then we get these platforms that you have to shoot to open, and then there's gonna be a bouncy segment coming up. I think that's next, actually. Yep, there it is. And now we just start bouncing around, because that's 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 how this game works. That, that's how Mega Man works. This is this is quintessential Mega Man, everyone. There we go, we got an M tank. Now we just gotta get through here, like so. And we just keep bouncing. We'll get there in the end, there we go. I like how those enemies can actually work as platforms. It's just an interesting little touch that I quite enjoyed, oh, quite enjoyed about them, and I fell and we have to redo it, and we were right at the end of the, uh, the area as well. Oh, I didn't know there was a checkpoint right here, that's actually quite kind. I thought you'd just have to restart the entire auto-scrolling segment again. Okay, that's cool. I'm okay with that then. So, let's go through the bounce in once more. And this time we'll make it to the end of the segment, no problem. God, this is so- this is so silly. This didn't need to be here, this just feels like such a silly addition. There we go. And now we have these little dripping... attacks that, you know, have been around for a while. And- oh, almost. And here's the end. It's pretty straightforward, actually. There we go. And there's the final Noble Nickel, which all we gotta do is use the wire adapter to get to. Like so. Boop. And if we go through here, where does it take us? Right back here. And there's an entire path that I didn't even show you guys. There's an entire path that I remember playing through my first playthrough, which didn't have any collectibles on it, but was pretty cool nonetheless. But, actually, let me show you this. This is an enemy. It's a little Mega Met. It's kinda cute. I quite like this. I don't know if it's killable. It is. It's pretty cute. And with that, that is the end of the stage. It's a pretty interesting stage overall, but it tries to do a little bit too much and doesn't really focus on one aspect, which means that everything feels a little bit lazy. So, let's take a little look at the judges' comments, especially starting with Pyro, who <laughs> said it was their least favorite. Snowrunt Pyro, 14 out of 50. Oh wow, um, wow. This is pretty awful. There is one absolutely massive flaw in this level in that it has literally no idea what it's doing. Virtually every gimmick in the engine appears at some point, for at least it feels, or at least it feels like it. And the level is so insanely unfocused that I don't even know what to think of it, besides it's really messy. None of the gimmicks are ever focused on or used well, and they constantly just fly in and out of existence. Nonsensical design is everywhere, like an excruciatingly long auto-scroll with a black background, and almost no enemies, but plenty of nightman bouncers. A random section where there's a block train that seems to want to crush you, but you can blow past it before it gets close to you. And asinine amounts of split paths. The latter is what utterly kills the level for me. Everything sprawl everywhere, in every direction you can think of, and it makes it completely impossible to have a sense of where you are at all. And this is amplified by the utter lack of focus. It took me over an hour to slog through the entire thing and get the energy element and all four noble nickels, and it was an incredibly unpleasant and absolutely boring experience. And on top of that, there's a bajillion weird secrets too, like some room with a ton of NPCs and a bonus fight with a strangely drawn Crash Man, which actually, we're with kind of a creative arena, but not really. This level is just a giant mess, and I did not enjoy it in the slightest. Dang. Jupy Hornet, 35 out of 50. 
I really enjoyed the nice platforming challenges this level provided. There were so many different gimmicks used in this stage, and they were all used so well. The best part for me was the force beam section, because there were clear outlines showing where the force beams were. This is how you make a challenging level without having it be exceedingly difficult. My main issue was that the level lagged, a lot. It wasn't game-breaking, but it did make some parts of the stage pretty annoying. I assume that was something that was fixed in the engine post-judging? Also, the Crash Man fight? What even was that? Angel, 14 out of 50. I tried my best to like this level, but unfortunately the heavy lag I had when playing through it made this pretty much impossible. Couple that with the maze-like structure of the level and playing it felt more like a chore than a fun experience, which is a shame. This level has ideas that it proposes, and it has a lot to offer, maybe even to the point where it becomes too much. The confusing layout of the level made me lose all sense of direction, and even after several playthroughs, I wasn't able to build a cognitive map of the level. When I got to the ending room, the first time I picked up the key and completely missed the exit. Heading back to the door, I thought the level only just now got started, and while somewhat scared, I was also excited to look through the level in order to find Crash Man, who I assumed would hold the energy element. Sadly, Crash Man's room is a mess, and getting to him didn't feel very rewarding. I eventually found the energy element on my third visit to the end room. On a more general note, the level didn't do a very good job of ramping up its difficulty or maintaining any kind of consistency. This level has everything, but doesn't really play around with anything, which is a shame. Gariri, 36 out of 50. This is a complicated one to review. Generally, it's good. The level design is mostly solid, and it's pretty fun to play through the first time. However, this level splits into so many paths, it becomes hard to even replay the stage without feeling annoyed at repeating the same section again. This is especially a problem if you're trying to get the Noble Nickels, which are scattered around the whole level, so getting them is a pain. Otherwise, it's a good stage. Ideas are interesting, and the level's graphics and music are good. Ace Spark, 19 out of 50. There comes a point where you need to stop. It's time to stop. This was a slog. I had so little fun playing this stage, I wanted to quit partway through. So I'm going to get the positive out of the way first. Your original assets are well drawn, although the color scheme is absolutely garish. And your opening area was great. Good conveyance, good design, really well thought out. And then I got to the second area, and the third, and the fourth, and then... Why? I know there is a lot in the dev kit, but you didn't need to use every single sodding gimmick. Later on in the stage, you seem to stop thinking and did the bare minimum required to implement a segment. In all fairness, there's nothing wrong with any of these rooms, aside from how easy they are. This is actually to your stage's benefit, believe me. And a lot of these areas introduce themselves well. Pick a gimmick, pick a second gimmick, maybe a third, and stick to them. Start doing clever stuff with them, and maybe this would work. Everything in the dev kit, though? Blech. You have the makings of a good designer. Just scale back next time. This wasn't fun. Finally, poor Crash Man. I'm not sure what good making him so gangly was, but it didn't help matters. I mainly agree with everything else. It was a case of he took everything out of the toy box, but didn't put everything back. I think that more could have been done with certain gimmicks in this stage, and I think he just overthought it and just made too many gimmicks. And there were parts that I didn't even show you guys. I just showed you the optimal route through the stage. Can you imagine someone who didn't know that route? Who didn't know about that secret passage? Who had to go through all of the normal rooms and normal paths as well? It's pretty damn jarring. Anyway. Hey, Time Man. I apologize for any inconvenience I may have caused you in the previous level. Sometimes there are unintended side effects of tinkering with time. Oh, it's fine. And... Molia. Seductive machinery noises. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. Infobox 800. Tier 3 boss. Alright. Let's do it. A tier 3 boss is quite an interesting one, I'm not gonna lie. Hi, Doorman. How are you doing? Looks good, doesn't it, sir? I feel they've captured my likeness very well. I'll be with you in a moment, sir. Just wait for me. Oh, sir, hold the door, please. Oh, we didn't hold the door for him. I'm sorry. You mega jerk. Is common courtesy not programmed into your matrix? Manners cost nothing, good sir. The anger that is building inside me burns with a passion yet unheard of. Sir, that inner fire will send you to the eternal damnation of Silicon Hell. Prepare to burn along with all the photocopiers. He's a very intense man. He also has... How many? How, how, how many? How, how many? How, uh, 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 
I mean, I mean, I mean, look at those, the, the health bars. There's a lot of health bars, and he does a lot of damage. It's a little bit concerning, you know? But he's actually not that bad, because for this fight, you only need to take out his first health bar. Once you do that, the fight is over. Except killing him is somewhat difficult. Just because of how much he moves through the stage. But I don't really want to waste any E-Tanks on him, so I'm going to try and beat him without using my E-Tanks. Oh, so close. You just have to get him down by one bar, and then the energy element appears from one of the doors. And that's how you beat him. But, you know, he's a bit crazy. He's a little bit cranky. He's a bit upset we didn't hold the door. Understandable, you know. Have a great day. Nope. Stay above him. That attack, by the way, apparently uh, there was an infamous thing with Dawnman, where in his original stage, oh, not his original stage, in the original fan game he comes from, uh, that attack uh, where he charges up the, the, the doors around him apparently used to be impossible to dodge. Uh, which made doing perfect runs of his uh, of his game pretty much impossible, which is something that a lot of people have noted, which I find kind of interesting. Go 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 go! Got him! Yes! Oh God! And Bennett, I left the element in that room. See ya, doorman. All right, and with that, doorman is taken out. And that is the end of Tier 3. So let's head back through Tier 3, remembering all the good times we've had. Random Pirate Man. Remembering all of the happy times of all these lovely Robot Masters who are hanging out here. Playing these great levels, except that one. Uh, and just, you know, enjoying our time. I like how the levels definitely got better, though, as we went through this stage. There were a lot of levels that were, especially this one, oh, that were so weird at the start, but got better over time. Anyway, how many Noble Nickels do we have now? I think it's worth checking. We have 26. I think we have enough Noble Nickels to go and say hello to Nightman again. So I think before we end this episode, we should do that. So, Nightman. Oh, hey, Ombudsman. And Shademan. Have I talked to you? I don't come to this pub often. Apparently scare people. And, oh, Mega Man, I see you. Wait, no, I've, re I've read you before. I feel like I've read you before. Hey, Nightman. Ah, I can feel that you have at least 20 nickels. Have you heard of the challenge tent? It's right next to the dojo, but it's restricted VIP access. I have some connections around here, so you can take an access card I have lying around. Oh, thank you. New upgrade, got the VIP pass. The challenge tent, an area to challenge yourself in the simulations, is now available. Interesting. Any new people down here I need to take a look at? I saw Doorman, I'll go back to him. Hey, Grenade Man. What kind of bit? Oh, wait, no, I've, I've talked to you. I remember. Have I talked to you, Mars? Oh, no, you're not, you're not Mars. You're Hyperstorm H. I thought you were Mars. I, I usually... I know the, the Mega Man uh, guys from Mega Man 1 through 10, but I don't know any of the Mega Man guys from the Game Boy games. Hey, Dawn Man. This restaurant is exquisite. I'm sure that even Chef Gordon Ramsay would enjoy it. <laughs> do, you, do, do, do you really think that? I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, he is quite a fan of pubs, though, to be fair. Alright, let's take a look at this challenge tent, then. Let's see what it is. I believe it's this place here? Yeah, the guy that was here is out of the way. Hey, Tri-Nitro Man. Ah, I see you have a pass. Welcome to my challenge tent. You see, I feel so, uh, passionate and explosive about the festival that I decided to set up this tent to, well, challenge visitors. You can complete all the various objectives laid down here and you'll be rewarded with some cool stuff in the back. Just, you know, something fun on the side. All right. Oh, this is the achievements. Collect every energy element in the submissions. Collect every single energy element. Collect every single noble nickel. Uh, the challenger. That song, clear the pit of pits. Challenge and clear the arena. Challenge and clear the mega arena. Challenge and clear all the arenas. Oh, wow. Let's see. Uh, let's go two. Uh, Scrooge McDuck, hold a lot of bolts at once. Max out your E-Tanks and M-Tanks. Pop all of the balloons. Clear the hub's secret levels. Defeat the hub's secret bosses. Clear a level while using the secret beverage. 
Greed mode, knock around the jewel in tier three at least 20 times. Ah oh, yeah, did it. Intense training, beat up the test dummy enough. Okay. What about you, uh, what about number three? Tier 1 mastery, no damage run in tier 1, no damage run in tier 2, tier 3, tier 4, tier 5, tier 6, tier 7, tier 8. Okay, so there are perfect run achievements. Good to know, good to know. I'll have to remember that. Alright. No damage run in tier 9, no damage run in tier 10, no damage run in any of the final stages, no damage run any level in... Clear every room in the true finale. Clear the last arena without spending weapon energy, purchase every costume, and 100% the game, which I actually kind of want to do. And this is... Oh, it's this. Okay, main hub, lights lab, Capcom logo. What other music choices have we got here? Eddie's shop, costume shop. Anything else? Oh, wow. Yeah, let's play Mega Londo's theme. I found out, actually, this is the Ornstein and Smo theme, but it's, uh, in 8-bit, which is really cool. I quite like that. Alright, so that is the end of this episode. In the next episode, we're gonna be heading to Tier 4 Station, and I might try and perfect run one of the Tier 1 stages while we're at it, and we'll be changing our costumes. So, thanks so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out my other videos if you're interested. In the bottom left, you can find more Mad Mammal videos, and in the bottom right, you can find my Minecraft game show. We're gonna be doing season two of the small show very soon, so keep an eye out for that. And if you wanna help support the channel, please check out my Patreon and consider funding because uh, all of my income comes from YouTube and Twitch. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.